That float's getting hit. There it goes. There it goes. See what we got. He don't feel very big. Unless he's just swimming in Timmy. Double hooked up. These are some ornery old things right here. Number one, on the float. He's pulling. He's a pulling. Come on up, catfish. That's a lot bigger fish right there. Oh. Yeah. That's close to a 30 pounder right there. Let me go ahead and throw this float back out. That lets me know they'll hit a body piece. I caught this first one on a head piece. That's good, because sometimes they'll only want one or the other. And when they want both, you've got more bait. Oh 
Oh yeah. Yeah, this is closer to a 30 here. Oh, thick fish. They always gonna curl that tail in the other way where you ain't gonna get a good length on him. But he's a nice thick fish, man. Yes, sir. You gonna put that tail out where they can see you? Just one time? Just one time for me? He ain't gonna do it, so we ain't gonna worry about it. Either way, it's a pretty nice fish, man. Both bites I've gotten are closer to this brush right here. And that's why I'm kind of pulled over to the side where I can easily get a lot of my lines close to it. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon. Hopefully this wind concentrates and don't get me blown sideways. It's trying to come in sideways. I've got a storm blowing in. I've literally got maybe an hour and a half to fish today. And I drove probably an hour and a half or better just to get to this place. So I'm going to drive three hours to fish for probably less than two hours because I knew these fish were in here. I caught a good one in here. Uh, in one video previous, probably a 40 pound fish. And we've got a cold front that's already came through, so it's colder today. I've got another one hitting right now. It's going to be colder tomorrow, and by this weekend, we're going to have uh, highs in the 30s. I'm already getting hit, I believe. And that could push these fish out of this creek. So I'm taking advantage of them while I can. This is a flooded creek, basically way up over the banks, uh, coming off the Tennessee River. I'm going to put one more on this Catfish Dave Bling Bling rig and put it way up on this other bank. I tried to do it with this left rod, but it's an egg sinker, and the current has kind of rolled it towards the middle of the river. So I'm going to put on a different kind of weight to see if I can't keep one right on that bank over there. Here we go, here we go. Pull and drag. Gonna take a bit to wear them out this close to the boat. Oh shoot. Oh shoot. Oh yeah. It's a nice fish. I see him. I see him. If I can get him before he takes off again, if I can get him, he's came right to the top. That's the biggest one of the day. Same spot, man, right up in that brush right over there. That one's definitely a high 30s.
very aggressive. him simmer down a minute. He thinks he's still in the water. I'll throw another big chunk of bait right there. Doing well on these body chunks. That's good because I got plenty of them and a lot of rain fixing to move in on me. I had to make quick work of this and so far we're doing pretty good. Three fish just sitting in one spot, man, in about 30 minutes time. Oh no! I didn't want to do that. Oh no. Oh, you gotta be kidding me, y'all. You've got to be kidding me. Let me show you all this fish and we'll fix this. All right, y'all, the sun is right in the camera. That's a nice fish, man. Yes, sir. Yep. Nice fish. See if I can get... I don't think I'm gonna get my hook back, but I'm gonna try to get my sinker back. Yes, sir. Look at there. There goes the bait. Catfish gonna get him a free meal. This is the reason I got these rod holders set up like this. I got a spread going out here. I seem to be having most action close to the brush. Well, I've already caught two out of this one spot right here. And I don't really feel like moving the boat yet. So I'm going to bait up one more. And I'm going to throw it farther down river. And try to get it right up against the bank down there. These big fish, they're probably hiding right in that brush. But I've got some spread out in case they are just moving through. One thing about that float rig is I can just keep sending it down river. So that's what I'm doing. I'm hoping it'll kind of drift over towards the right. We've got a good bait spread. The fact that we're here in the middle of the afternoon and haven't been here very long, we've done pretty good. That float's getting hit. <laughs> Lock her down. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Isn't this fun?
two on the float. There we go. Yeah! Yes, sir. If that float ain't doing nothing where it's at, you got a little bit of current, just let some more line out. I can get the ultimate bait spread, man, between covering from that bank to that bank, and then that float rig, I can just work it down the river. We're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good for a uh, quick afternoon run trying to beat the rain. There are several reasons that fish will move out of a large river and come up into a smaller creek like this. One is extreme flooding. When they get weeks of just super hard flow, those fish will get tired of it, man. And they'll start moving their way up on the banks or up into these creeks into the slacker water. Another reason can be, uh, as you're getting up close to spring, these creeks will heat up a lot faster than the main river out there with all the deep water. We actually have two of those things going on today. I've got the flooded conditions. I've got 64 degree water temps. Water temps out in that main river, 58. Uh, another reason they may come up in these creeks is when it comes time to nest. Uh, that water starts getting in the mid-60s. Uh, when it hits 70 degrees, blue cat are ready to spawn. So these big fish will come up into these small areas like that where they can get under stuff and make nests. We are real close to that season right now. It's early March. Yeah, we still got some cold weather, even some snow on the way. But just a couple days of bitter cold won't change the river temperature too drastically. So we are getting up close to the blue cat's nesting time. I've kind of got the perfect storm going on here. And with the storm coming, I've only got uh, less than two hours to fish it. But either way, I figured it would be my best bet with the upcoming weather to pull off some decent fish in a fast video. Gotta have those algorithms.
Pull and drag. I have to let him do his thing. I see him. Come on. Come on. Let me get a little more turn on this. Tell you what, he fought a lot harder than what he is, but he's a nice fish. Man. Oh. Yeah, he pulled a lot harder than what he is. And I expected that thing to be over 50. Quality fish, y'all. He pulled harder. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He pulled. All right, y'all. We ain't caught no monsters in here, but we have caught a couple nice quality fish, man. For a quick trip, gonna get blown out by the weather for the next few days. Hey, I'll take it, man. I chose the right place to come. I came and got her done. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, head back to the ramp because the dock is actually under water. And if the wind gets to blowing, me trying to put this boat back on the trailer by myself in bad weather ain't going to be good, especially with not even a dock I can tie off to. So I'm going to head back. We gave it a go and caught some catfish for the Catfish Dave Show. This is a video. There was fish in the video. That makes it a fishing video. This is Catfish Dave with another one signing out.